So I wanted to review uh, Newman projections for next exam. I think it'll be on there. So I just wanted to make sure you guys were able to tell the difference between um, uh, between what a staggered and eclipse confirmation would look like from the structural formula. So I'll tell you right now that this one right here is going to be staggered. And then this one on the right here is going to be eclipse. And you can tell this because um, of what's parallel to what. So basically this um, this hydroxyl group kind of runs in between um, these two that flank out here and then these two that flank out here kind of run towards one that points straight down here. And then in this one you have the ones that point straight up that run straight into each other. So they, they directly overlap if you looked at them from head on. And then um, the ones, the wedges and the uh, the dashes here also do that. So if you aren't able to tell that from just looking at it, uh, obviously the best place to start is to look at each carbon individually and draw out what their, um, I guess what their like, what their partial numeric projection would be. So on the closest carbon, so we're looking at carbon one here, and this will be carbon two. At carbon one here, um, you have the hydroxyl group pointing straight up. So that's how it's gonna end up on the Newman projection. Then you have the um, the carboxylic acid group pointing to the right because it's coming out of the page. And then you have the hydrogen on the left. And sorry, these are so poorly drawn. And so for carbon two, and I'm just gonna draw them out separately just for simplicity, which will get the circle. At the top here, you have the hydroxyl group point, or flanked out to the right the hydrogen flanked out to the left, and then the carboxylic acid group straight down. So then when you put it all together, it should look like this. And so now let's do the one on the right. For the one on the right, you have, this is gonna be your, uh, your carbon one, right? The one closest to you. You got the hydrogen on the wedge. I know it's poorly drawn, but that's what it's supposed to be. And the hydroxyl group on the dash. And then the carbon farthest away, carbon two, has the hydroxyl group straight up, hydrogen on the right, and the carboxylic acid group on the left. So you can see that when you put these together, these two, you'll get a, uh, you'll get a staggered confirmation with a lot of interactions between the substituents because you have a lot of bulky stuff. So you probably won't see a new projection like this on the exam, but I think it's nice to look at anyway. Um, and so, I don't know if I feel like drawing this one out. No, I will anyway, just in case. And the hydrogen clicks with the hydrogen. This is really poorly drawn. Try to make sure that you um, that you make it clear kind of where everything is. Like you can kind of see how you have this little like this little triforce symbol or whatever on this carbon here, and then you can see that it's kind of overlapped by by the triforce little thing in the back. So you can kind of see that this is a you can kind of see that this is an eclipse confirmation, even though it's really really poorly drawn. All right, and just to review again about, so I'm gonna go back to the one that's better drawn. 
just to review again about how to uh, draw um, draw all the Newman projections, all the possible Newman projections for a given structural formula. Um, you remember to just hold one constant and then just um, rotate the other carbon. So I'm keeping this carbon right here, the um, the one closest to me, completely constant. I'm going to hold all three of these constant. And I'm going to move these two. And I'm just going to go ahead and decide to move them clockwise. So after a clockwise rotation, and you're going to go from, because you're in, um, this is staggered, right? So you're going to go from a staggered to an eclipse confirmation. And it should look like... I don't know why I did that. was way too small. Like, what am I doing? Thank God I'm not in this class right now. I would not be doing well. So now we move to this hydrogen from here to here. So this is where it ends up. This hydroxyl group moved from here to here to overlap with the carboxylic acid group. And it's going to have all sorts of funky electrostatic interactions that will be very destabilizing because they're both... Well, actually, you might have some hydrogen bonding that could go on. Anyway, that's not irrelevant. That's not, that's not important. She'll never give you something that looks like this, by the way. And then you'll have this, this next carboxylic acid group that goes, let's see, I move the one from the back from here to here. I really don't think I have enough room to draw this. And that's what the um, the next Newman projection will look like. So then the one you draw after this will be staggered and you'll go in between staggered and eclipse and staggered and eclipse until you get the maximum amount that you can draw uh, for this compound. And to talk about the interactions, all right, so if she were giving you a chart you would look um, for the for an OHH eclipsed interaction, and you wanted to if you were if you were given a chart and you wanted to uh, calculate the total energy of this thing, you get an OHH. You look for a CO two H and an H eclipsed. Make sure it says eclipsed by it, or else you'll calculate the wrong energy. And then one with the carboxylic acid that's overlapped with the hydrogen. And that'll account for the total energy of this thing. Because remember that remember that all of these substituents on on the same carbon don't interact with each other in that sort of way. So you can't calculate the energy between like see say this and this. And for this one, you're gonna look for all your, your gauche interactions, right? So this doesn't count. The interaction between any two hydrogens in a Newman projection or in a cyclohexane chair conformation is pretty much it's pretty much negligibly small because it's basically just two protons um, just repelling each other and it's really just not that significant. So you have to worry about those, but on, but you will have to worry about these. The hydroxyls and you'll have to worry about the carboxylic acids. Just remember to worry about everything that's on different carbons. All right, and I think that's about all I wanted to cover on numeric projections. I think you guys did pretty well with this, so most of you probably won't even need to watch this. So uh, good luck. So I wanted to do a problem or two about um, where, where you're given a structural formula and you're asked to determine if um, the two are, are the same enantiomers or diastereomers. And so a uh, fun fact about these, oh, this is one of the ones from the worksheet or one of the examples from the worksheet, but it didn't ask for this. Uh, but a fun fact about these that you probably uh, already know from class that you might be responsible for on the exam is that these are meso compounds. Meaning that they have chiral centers in them, but they have a plane of symmetry. So you, you can just cut this in half like this and you end up with two equivalent sides. And therefore the entire molecule as a whole is achiral, even though these individual carbons are chirality centers. 
So of course, with the um, well, one way you could start this problem is to um, if you're really good, if you have really godly spatial reasoning skills, you can take a look at it and you can figure out if it looks like it's been reflected in some plane or if you know if the molecule like it's just been like rotated if certain amount of degrees or something and you can determine if they're the same or enantiomers that way um i wouldn't recommend that though because that's not as reliable as going through and finding the carl centers so i'm gonna find the carl centers <laughs> all right so looking at this carbon it's connected to four different groups, so that's good. We know it's a chirality center. And we see that we have some competition here. So everywhere you go, you run into a carbon, right? But you don't run into three equivalent carbons. They're different. So going out to here, you run, out, you run into a carbon that's connected to two hydrogens. This carbon has three hydrogens. But this one only has one and it's connected to two other carbons. So since this one is connected to two groups of higher molecular weight than just hydrogens, or one carbon and a hydrogen, then it's your number one priority group for this carbon. So this carbon's number one priority group is here. Then this um, carbon is only connected to two hydrogens and two other carbons. So here's your number two. And this carbon is connected to a carbon and three hydrogens. So it's going to be your number three group. And of course, your number four for this carbon, there's the implicit hydrogen. I think it's the down wedge here because in the structure of the formula, you have to, you have to specify up and down. So to find this, to assign S or R configuration to this chiral center, you go from one, two to three, and you see that you're going clockwise and your hydrogen is pointing away from you, so that one's R. All right, and so for this one, the same reasoning applies. Here's carbon one for this carbon, carbon two, and here's your carbon three, and here's your priority four group. I should have drawn a wedge. And so you're going counterclockwise. Oh my bad. You're going counterclockwise with this hydrogen facing towards you. So you should get R. And then let's take a look at this one. So again, we have one. So finding this um find the stereochemistry of this Carl Center first. One, two three and four with the hydrogen facing us because this one's on a wedge or this one's on a dash so the hydrogen has to be on a wedge two three so it's r facing towards us so this one's going to have to be s and then for this one you have one two and three again hydrogen facing away and you're going counterclockwise with the hydrogen facing away from you all right, so we've gone through and we've um, assigned the, the uh, configurations to every chiral center. We get RR here and SS here. So since both chiral centers have flipped from into opposite configurations, that makes these enantiomers. If we had gotten RR here and RR on on the second um on the second structure then they'd be the same but say we got rr on the left and like sr on the right that's when they're diastereomers and just keep in mind that you all you can only find a diastereomer when you have more than one chiral center so goodness yeah yeah that's right yeah I thought I did that wrong. More than one, greater than one. Carl Center. Nice. I passed math. All right. So I don't think there's anything more I wanted to say about that one. All right. All right. Good luck. Good luck.